members who continually show up and you can count on every week, you know, uh, to be here. It's really a blessing to be able to go into church in this day and time. Who would have ever thought uh, that that would be the conversation? But it is. What's wrong with it? It's upside down? Hello? Hang on. It ain't. Whoa. Oh, do I need it? Hey, hey, I hear it. Praise God. Sorry. It's on. Praise God. Okay. So anyway, uh, we are definitely glad to be here. Of course, we've got the fellowship afterwards. Definitely looking forward to hanging out with you guys. Uh, so I'm going to bring a, a quick word and something God has put on my heart. And I've been studying for uh, a, a week about it and... Uh, even though it was actually for next week. Uh, so I, I wanted to come in this direction because I feel like maybe somebody needs to hear this today. How many is glad that God is not a man like us? Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. He's not a man that he should lie, right? But there's so many more characteristics about God uh, that we are so glad that he's not like us in a lot of ways, right? We need to become more like Him. Amen. Uh, a God who's loyal, you know. A, a God who, who when you when you uh, trust in Him, you can trust that He's got the situation, you know. If, if God was like a man, we wouldn't be able to fully put our trust in that. Are you with me? But I want to uh, get into this quick message. I'm going to call it a quick message. Let's, let's pray pray goes by quick. Uh, I won't uh, I won't be up here long. But I, I, I do really want uh, everybody in here to, to really come back to the foot of Jesus. Because so many times we try to do everything in our own strength and in our our flesh. Uh, and we get to fighting uh, you know because the enemy's quick. How many knows uh, these songs man were extremely uh equipped with scripture and with truth, the ones we just sung. Uh, and, and that first one we sung, uh, uh, the, the woman was saying, uh, I, I hid, I hid, I ran and hid. Right? Are you with me? How many knows in life we attempt to do that often? <laughs> and, and the enemy wants to get you to buy into the fact that God is so angry with you that if you go to him, how, how many has ever felt that in your heart? Like, you know, it's not a physical thing, but in your heart, you're running from God. You're like, you don't want to go and you can't pray to him or you don't, uh, you feel some type of way that, you know, he's, you're just ashamed, right? Or or, or whatever. And, and what the enemy is doing is he's causing you to go away from the actual strength that's in God. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, you need to understand the mercies of God. Uh, and how that God has new mercies every day. Well, what's the first thing Adam did when he sinned? He ran and hid. Are you with me? How many knows that we have a covering in God, in Christ Jesus our Lord? Amen. God made him a covering for us. And uh, so I want you to understand this because as long as you're running from God, you're going to experience all the uh, the things that come with running from God. You know, the enemy's going to tear you up out here. Your protection is in Christ, mm -hmm. right? In your covering, right? And how many knows you can't even be good enough to get there? Amen. Amen. And that's what I want to teach you about Amen. today because you need to understand that righteousness is by faith. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to start in Romans chapter 10 because I'm going to paint this small picture for you to understand. Understand what I'm saying. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. I'm sure you've heard this scripture before, but I want to reread it. 
It says that this is the word of faith which we preach. Praise God. The word of faith which we preach. That God has raised us from the dead. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Here, I'm off track. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. Somebody say, believe in your heart. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes, somebody say one believes, unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Uh, and I need you to understand that uh, seeking God by faith is really where your righteousness is. As a matter of fact, the truth of the scriptures is this. You can't clean up and come to God. You have to come to God and let him clean you up. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And this is something that, uh, you know, time and time again, even as a man of God, like the struggles and things that I've been through, I, I come to him in life and sometimes I forget that Christ is my governor. Are you with me? Uh, and, and, man, I don't care what anybody says. I don't. I know this God. You know, I know uh, uh, what God has, has done inside of my heart. Are you with me? And, and guess how I got there? By faith. Amen. Are you with me? So anything that I even become after that is by faith. Amen. You don't stop. You know, that's what he uh, was telling the church of Galatia. They were attempting to go back and be justified by the law. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, how do you start out in faith and now you're in the law again? See, but we have a misunderstanding of what faith is. True faith in Jesus Christ will produce a clean heart in you Amen. that manifests itself outwardly. Now, somebody said that's that's a different subject because the Bible says this. He said, if you, uh, he who seeks me with all of his heart shall find me. And what we want to do as humans is we want to come to God on this little side note trip. And we want to stop right here. Don't come no closer to me, God. I'm, I'm dirty. Are you with me? Y'all know what I'm talking about. And you don't want to give up this side. Don't let God in this part of your heart. That's some bad stuff over there, right? How many knows that uh, Jesus says also, uh, it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defiles him, but what comes out of his mouth. Why? Because it proceeds from his heart. And out of the heart, adulteries and wickedness and everything proceeds from a man. How I many knows the heart is deceitfully wicked, according to the Bible, and who can know it? Uh, and that's why uh, Paul says it like this. He says, man, don't judge things before their time. Why? He said, because God, who will judge the secrets of the heart, because we can really look good in front of each other. Yeah. But God knows the depths of your heart, and you're open before him, naked. There's nothing... Hiding from you. You can't hide from this God. You can't lie to this God. You can lie to everybody else. But you can't lie to God. Amen. Right? Amen. And, and, you know, so many times we attempt to just barely survive in this Christian faith. And walk around like we're, we're doing real good. And the truth is inside we're broken. We're beaten. We're, we're torn down. We're, we're lost. And we're trying to keep the outward image. But we're, we're, we're struggling on the inside. Are you with me? Uh, and how many knows the church is supposed to be the place where you come and they build you right back up? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you go out here in this world, you get whooped and beat up and uh, uh, chewed out. You're supposed to come in here. The, the brothers and sisters of Christ are supposed to go, you're supposed to be ready to go back out and fight again. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and we got to understand, like, this is a, a real war going on. And most, most people are really struggling, struggling in, inside and they're broken, they're, they're wounded. And how many of those hurting people hurt people? Yeah. And, and if hurting people hurt people, I, I begin to realize that every time somebody cuts me out or done me wrong or whatever, it's because they're truly broken on the inside. Amen. And how many knows that for us to be able to be ministers and do the work of the Lord, we have to uh, uh, get that healing for ourselves. But we're going to run out there and cuss somebody out too. Yeah. Are you with me? Come on now, y'all got some. We got some work to do. Uh, so what I what I begin to understand about about God is uh, there ain't nothing I can do to get close to God apart from faith. Are you with me? 
What does it say? It says one believes from the heart unto righteousness. Are you with me? So faith, righteousness is by faith. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Uh, so I, I want to uh, put out like two more little uh, facts in this matter. And the, uh, the second one is in uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 1. Uh, and I'm just going to start at chapter 15, verse 1. I'm not going to say, are y'all with me, but are y'all with me? <laughs> and certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren. Unless you are circumcised according to the customs of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them. How many knows uh, even the apostles had dissensions and dis disputes? Amen. Uh, yeah. And praise God. It happens. But it says, therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissenting and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas, or Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles, to the elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed by Phoenicia, or being Phoenicia. Uh, I can't read very good. You'll figure that out about me. Uh, in Samaria, describing the, uh, the conversation of the Gentiles. And they, they, they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders. And they reported all things that God had done with them. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying it is necessary to circum circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So you got to understand in the early church age, they were being, they were transitioning from, uh, you know, the Jewish religion into Christianity. And uh, there's a lot of confusion in the matter. Uh, and, and, and God, who knows all men and who is not like men, how many knows he's going to do, God's going to do what God's going to do with or without what you think and how you think it should be done? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. How many knows that God went on moving and doing what he did? Even though it didn't line up with people's precepts and thoughts of what they think it should have been like. Uh, and sometimes in the flesh, man, that's, that's, that's what we do too. We think it's supposed to be this way and that way and this way. But how many knows that God's ways are higher than your ways? You couldn't comprehend things about God and what God is doing if you wanted to. And if you do know anything, it's because he revealed it to you. Are you with me? And Paul says, hey, uh, let's be humble because what we do know, it's been uh, revealed to us. Uh, but I want you to see this. Now the apostles and the elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose us among uh, chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Here's the key. This is what I want you to see. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts. By faith. Are you with me? Uh, and I wanted to bring you this, this situation so you can understand that it's by faith God purifies our heart. Are you with me? I'm not going to say it again. Are you with me? <laughs> I need a new one. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm pointing this out to you so you can understand that it's by faith that what Jesus Christ did. Right? And, and it says that God who knows the hearts filled them with the Holy Spirit and purified their hearts by faith. So what does that mean? There, there's two things there that we need to really pay attention to. Number one, God who knows the hearts. Are you with me? And what I'm saying is you, you can look good, I can look good in front of everybody else, but at the end of the day it's God who knows the heart. Amen. The hidden things of man. Uh, the things you're holding Amen. back, the things you refuse to let go mm -hmm. of, the mm -hmm. pain, the struggle, everything you've been through. Mm -hmm. God knows our hearts. Yep. Are you with me? Yeah. Uh, 
And the second thing I need you to pay attention to is that he recognized their hearts and purified their hearts by faith. Yep. And how many knows that this is the true nature of Christianity? Amen. You cannot clean yourself up on the outside and come before God because you're still filthy right now. Amen. Don't you understand? Amen. That it takes God and the work of Jesus Christ <clears throat> and our faith in Him to cleanse us. And then from a clean heart, we can be clean on the outside too. Are you with me? That's the, the, the true nature of Christianity. Uh, and, and so quick we try to judge everything with our fleshly eyes and we're making huge mistakes when we do that. Are y'all with me? Sometimes people need to uh, see the real church and they need to come here when they're wounded and broken and be built up. Are you with me? Uh, and I think a lot of times we, we, we uh, and I, myself included, man, I prejudge situations all the time. And then I have to go back and apologize and, and, and say, man, that, that probably wasn't the right thing to say. Are you with me? Amen. But praise God that God is not like man. Amen. Right? God is nothing like that. God uh, knows the hearts and knows all things. And we can truly trust in Him. But I just want you to understand the reason you're running from God is not because God hates you. Because the devil's lying to you. You're, you're believing your mind and you're believing the whispers of the devil and you're running from God who is able to make you well, yeah. to make you right. And to seek righteousness any other way, you've missed the mark. I don't care how long you've been in church and how long you've been doing this or, or any of that. We seek the righteousness that is faith in Christ Jesus. That faith. And giving our whole heart to Him is what purifies us before the Lord. Are you with me? Man, I'll, I'll go all day long if y'all let me. Praise God, because I'm telling you, it's what the Bible says. Bill said, no, no. I'm just kidding. I see you, bro. I see you. Uh, be easy, be easy. Uh, uh, and I also just want to make one more point. Well, number one. Everything that man thinks about you is one thing. Everything that God thinks about you is another. And you can't get your identity from what everybody else thinks about you. Are you with me? You have to get your identity by what thus saith the Lord. What God thinks about you. Amen. Because the world is broken. And we're receiving our identity from that broken world. And we're trying to uh, fit in and be like them. But how many knows we need to fit in and be like God? Yeah. Because He's the truth. Amen. He's whole. That's the picture of Jesus Christ. That's what this is all about. It was a man who was uh, perfectly right with God. Are y'all with me? Do y'all understand? He was a prime example of what wholeness looks like. And, 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 and we follow Him, you know? And, and we just got to at this time in, in the world, dude, if y'all ain't noticed, it's just getting darker and darker and darker. And at some point, you're going to have to draw the line. At some point, you're going to have to say, hey, this world is wicked. Because we used to be able to kind of just be right there with it. Everybody's kind of good people. But now, it's that, that, that line is really getting thick, if you know what I mean. Yes. Uh, and we need to be real uh, leery about where, what we're doing in that in that area because man the devil's quick man but I want to end uh, with a, a final word about David you know the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God Amen. so I'm trying to bring all this together for you real quick because it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God but I want to teach you about David real quick uh, how many knows that David didn't do things like everybody else did things? As a matter of fact, Jesus even uh, 
uses scripture. What about David when he went into the temple and ate the showbread? And, uh, you know, when on the Sabbath, uh, uh, you know, so when you got Jesus quoting David, you got, or, or quoting this about David, you got to go back and look and say, what's he talking about, bro? And you begin to realize that David, the Bible says, was a man after his own heart, but he also just, he didn't do things, uh, in our opinion, the right way. Amen. Because you're not supposed to eat the, the bread that's for the priest and you're, you're not supposed to eat on the Sabbath. You're not supposed to do all these things. Are you with me? But how many know is David came into the courtroom of heaven by his praise and his heart. Somebody must say his heart. He was a man after God's own heart. Are you with me? And, and we see this strange thing, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, David's pointing this thing out. And he's like, what? Uh, you know, if, if, if you're so right, have you never read about David? You know the scripture so well, you ain't read about David? Are y'all you, are you, are you following? But I want to also tell you about three different phases of David real quick. When he was a young boy, you know, that David, when he was... All alone in that field, you know, he was with his sheep, he's praising God, you know, singing his songs, and, you know, God obviously recognized him when no other man in the world did, rejected by his father, rejected by his brothers, that kind of thing. He didn't fit in anywhere except with God and those sheep, praise God. But after he jo uh, 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 stepped on the scene and, and dropped Goliath and all the things started going good in his life, uh, you know, he rose up to be king and uh, he he uh, become this uh, man. How many knows that David became king and he learned a whole other side of God? When he brought that Ark of the Covenant into the city uh, and then somebody touched the Ark and fell over dead. Are, are y'all following me? Y'all know that story? Yep. Uh, and this same God that he loves with all his might and all his heart, he learned a whole other side of God that he never knew before. He was scared. He was afraid. Are you with me? Uh, and then how many knows that sometimes God will show us another side of him that we, we didn't know? And, and, and sometimes throughout our life, we're, we're discovering who God is. We're, we're, we're trying to understand who this God is. Uh, and how many knows that ain't the end, end of the story, though? Because, uh, you know, in the book of Hebrews, it says that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And it is. Uh, and David learned how scary God could be and the glory of God could be and the presence of God can be powerful, scary. Uh, but at the end of his life, uh, how many knows he sinned against the Lord? By, well, we know Bathsheba and all that stuff, right? Uh, but at the end of his life, even after this, he sinned against the Lord by trying to number Israel. Yep. Are y'all familiar with this story? Yep. And, and basically, you know, God is the God of small numbers. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he'll defeat a whole army uh, with 300 men. Like, get it, right? Uh, and, and it was a sin that he would go and count all the children of Israel in his pride. You know, saying, we done this. Are you with me? Right. That's where his heart went. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he woke up. He, he realized he sinned against the Lord. And, and he, he, he had this prophet come to him and tell him, you know, uh, so look, this is what's going on, Brother David. God has sent me. You got, you got three options here, bro. That's, that's Daniel's interpretation. Uh, but he's like, man, you got, you got three options, you know. Uh, and, and, and I'm not going to go through the options. But uh, one of them was uh, that you fall into the hands of your enemy and uh, you run uh, and, and, and this, that, and the other. Or a plague come through and uh, wipe out, you know, do this and do that. Uh, and, and, you know, David, his final words to this was, and I'm telling you this for a reason. Because God is not like us. And David's words to this was, I would rather fall into the hands of the living God who is merciful and has compassion towards me than men who are evil and have no mercy. And 
no grace. So I, I wanted to give you that extreme dynamic because I need you to understand that by the end of David's life, he learned that God can be scary and uh, the things of God, the holy things of God are, are something to be extremely reverent of. But at the end of his life, he had figured out that God was loving, compassion, and he was long suffering toward us. Man, is God not incredible, dude? I would Amen. give up on somebody a thousand times. <laughs> but praise God, he didn't give up on me. Are y'all, do y'all understand how amazing God's heart is? Yes. And we need to get to that understanding that I would rather fall into the hands of the living God than the hands of men. Amen. And sometimes we, we're running away from the, the very thing that's going to protect us, save us, change the whole situation. And the enemy's got us running from God. How many can feel that? How many knows what I'm talking about? Yeah. Man, I've done it. I've done it, man. I can put on a good show and act like I've been this great Christian my whole entire life. But the truth is, I haven't. And uh, there's another truth. Uh, I, I know what it is to run from God. So ashamed. So broken. And run. And I run and run and run. How many knows? It was probably the worst time. I've had some real bad times in my life. But running from God is the most painful, dark experience of my whole entire life. It's something about knowing God and then running from Him versus not even knowing God and then just being out there in the darkness. But once you know God and run from Him, it changes things, don't it? You finally get this place where you, you get to this place of pure humility. Where you're just crying out to God. And you begin to seek God with all your heart again. And how many knows that God is merciful? God is gracious. And he will forgive you and reorder your steps. And that's what I want to tell you, man. Stop running from the Lord. The devil's a liar. We enter this thing by faith. The righteousness that's going to be found in your flesh is going to be found by faith in Jesus Christ. If he who is in Christ uh, is in you, who raised Jesus from the dead, he will also give life to your mortal bodies. We need that spirit in us to bring us to life. Are you with me? Quit running. Quit trying to do it in your flesh. Praise God. Let's seek this thing by faith. No way we're actually going to get there. Are you with me? How many would rather fall into the hands of this crazy God in the hands of our enemies or anybody else. I would too. And uh, I want you to know that God loves you today. And uh, the more we become like him, the better of a person we will be. The more you run from him and become like the devil, the worse of a person you're going to be. We all agree there. So uh, at this time, I'm going to close the message. But I want, I want each and every one of us in here to, uh, you don't have to get out of your seats, none of that, but I want you to bow your heads where you're at. And uh, it's time to get back to the heart of the Lord, back to the heart of worship. Stop running from God, who's there to help us and save us, who we can trust, who's loyal. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you today, Lord God. We want a fresh start today, Lord God. We want this day. Lord, that we humble ourselves and come back to your heart, Lord God. Remove uh, uh, the idols out of our heart and everything in our heart that we're trying to hide from you, Lord God. We want to open it up to you right now, Lord God, and, and bring healing to us. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Take our whole hearts, Lord God, and pour out your Spirit on us, Lord. We thank you so much for everything you've done at the cross and uh, putting the enemy in his place, Lord, and sealing our fate by the blood of Jesus. We pray that you just take us into the Holy of Holies, Lord God, by your blood. I pray that you just uh, anoint each and every person here, Lord God. Open uh, everybody's eyes, Lord God, and help us to realize our purpose and our destiny and our identity in you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
Love y'all, man. It's, it's good to see y'all. And uh, I guess we'll see y'all outside for some food. We have a close and a close in him. Praise God. And uh, just know that I love you and I see you. Praise God.